Hey guys and welcome to GDC. Today we're going to take a look at directional dependent animations within your 2D games and this tutorial will be applicable to both square and isometric top-down games. Let's get started on getting your games animated. If you want to learn how to design and make games or if you want to learn how to use Godot then subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to make sure you don't miss a thing. Also you can ask me any question both game related and Godot related in my stream. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday and I stream game development only. So come and check it out, links and details down in the description below. So in the last episode of our combat series we made this player controller that is able to fire these ice spears in different directions. However, the ice spears are currently not animated and they don't take their particular sprite for from the sprite sheet on based on the direction. Also, we have implemented some anti-run and gun mechanics, but right now we're only having the idle animation play when we stand still and fire and we want that to be a shooting animation. So we're going to have a look at how we can take the direction in which the character is facing and how we can play the right animation based on in what direction the player fires and in what direction the bullet or in this case the projectile is traveling. If you have not seen the episode for the how to create the bullet or how to spawn it in or how to remove it from the game again, make it interact with for example the wall, then please go and check out the other combat series tutorial on shooting and projectiles. I'll put a link up there somewhere. To start with our directional dependent animations, we can first have a look at the animations for our player controller. They are, of course, also directional dependent. And they are pretty much the easiest form of directional animations. What's happening is that within our movement loop, we're defining a move direction, a X and a Y, and this is a vector 2. Now that vector 2 is used in the animation loop to determine in which direction the character is moving. And there's only eight possible outcomes because we're controlling the character with the four arrow buttons on our keyboard. So those four possibilities are matched and then we know in which direction the character moves. West, east, south, north or maybe you want to use a different naming convention like top, down, bottom, top, left, top, right, etc. That's your choice. However, for our shooting animations and our bullet animations, we run into a problem because we don't have eight possible outcomes for the vector 2. The vector 2 can have many forms of different outcomes because we have rotated, we have given the shooting uh, direction free rotation. So that means on a full 360 degree circle, we can shoot in every single direction and that will create different vector 2s for every different direction. So our match command would become endlessly long if you take into account decimals as well. Therefore, we need to take into account not the specific vector 2, but the radius which is uh, in which we uh, are shooting, the directional radius in which we're shooting. To do that, I'm going to go over to a PowerPoint presentation to give you a better understanding of the concept so that you can implement it yourself as well. This is a circle. Uh, but this is also a circle how Godot is using the degree system. In Godot you can go endlessly round with more and more and more degrees, but the animations and how we are um, outputting them in our rotation command are going to be between 0 and plus 180 degrees and 0 and negative 180 degrees. So we want, for example, with our uh, bottom right animation, which is face at 45 degrees in a pure top-down angle, we want it to project the animation of um, bottom right between 22 uh, and a half and 67 and a half degrees. That radius among a 360 degree circle is closest to the animation um, bottom right. And of course, for um, right and bottom, you can simply add, keep adding 45 degrees to those intervals. But this is just for pure top down. With isometric, it becomes a little bit different. In an isometric situation, we have made an optical illusion for a sort of a 3D feel by shrinking the y axis with 50%. That's, for example, why we're using in our um, uh, tile set a 256 by 128. Um, 
town map uh, or squares. So that means that our animations for, for example, bottom down are not exactly at 45 degrees. They are angles. That's how all isometric art is drawn by isometric artists. So for our, for example, right animation, we want it to be between minus 15 and 15 degrees because it's a very small area where we want that animation to project to properly fit into with the rest of the tile map and with the rest of the isometric art. Now, as you see, that is a 30 degree radius instead of the 45 degree radius we had in the pure top down example. Then the next animation, which will be bottom right, is going to be 45 degrees long. And the pure down animation is going to be spanning a total of 60 degrees on a full radius. And by using these radiuses for all the animations, you get the right animation at the right time and it's angled in a way that you that fits with the rest of the art of isometric uh, game art. So we're going to be implementing these radiuses within our isometric games. I'm going to be using the minus 15, 15, 60, 120 radiuses. If you're working on a pure top-down game, then please use the 45 degree intervals to make sure you get those right animation angles. Now we're back in our code for our player character. And first what we're going to be doing is we're going to be defining a new variable which is going to be the fire direction. And we need this fire direction to be the, um, the direction in which we fire expressed in the degrees on that circle that I have showed or just drawn out earlier in the PowerPoint presentation. We're going to be using the fire direction and basically we're going to again, again get the angle between the player and the mouse position. And, but the difference is that this expresses the angle in radians and we want it to express it in degrees. So in order to do that, we first have to divide it by 3.14, the number of pi, and then we have to multiply it by 180, not 360, because like I said before, Godot is using 180 plus and 180 degrees negative. So if you multiply it by 360, you're, 360, you're gonna get very weird values. So with that done, we can now uh, change the animation mode on our animation loop to a shooting animation. So let's do that. Now for our animation loop, I'm first going to be replacing idle with shoot because we don't the shooting animation to play. And we have to combine that with a shooting direction or a fire direction. So we're going to take the fire direction and we're going to be matching it to whether it's smaller than 15 and bigger than minus 15. In other words, if it's between minus 15 and 15 and so forth for all the other directions, smaller than 60, but bigger than 15, etc., 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 thereby defining the shooting direction or the animation, the shooting animation, which is closest to the actual fire direction. Now with this, we can play the game and you'll see that the animations when I fire a bullet for example in this direction is equal to you can see the, the the tiles of the floor that this is like the exact um, direction of the animation of our play character and when I move it up here it's gonna change and you can see the when it's from one direction switch switches to the next one that's 15 degrees and that is about the half same with here we can go to 45 degrees and when we switch over to 45 degrees, it's going to play the south animation. So that is right there. And that is the closest um, values you can use um, for displaying the correct animation in an isometric tile game. Now, if you're wondering where do these animations come from, where does shoot and east and west and what does it all do? Basically what we're doing is we're moving um, and the movement speed, which is equal to not, if, if there is a moving speed in our movement loop, is taking the animation mode walk. If that is not the case, if the vector um, is zero, zero, then we know we're standing idle. And here the animation mode is shoot. And with the direction, we create the animation is the animation mode. So that is these values plus an underscore plus the animation direction. And if we go to our animation player, you'll see that it takes all the animations from the animation player that we have defined based on the spreadsheet. Now, with that done, we can turn our attention to the bullet and we can do pretty much the same with the bullet. Now, regarding the bullet, we want the bullet script or to be 
um, defining the animation itself. The bullet, as soon as we fire it, is a separate scene on the map scene. And we want that bullet to act for itself. So we want it to set its own animation. So we're gonna, underneath fire direction, we're gonna set the spell instance fire direction equal to the fire direction of the player because of course those values are exactly the same of course right now the spell in instance doesn't have a fire directions variable so we first have to be defining that so we go to our spell scene and we go to the script and underneath the script we'll be adding a new variable called fire direction now to set the actual animation for the bullet or the spell or your rocket i'm first going to be defining a new animation variable which we'll be putting into our animation player also, we set or, or define a new function set animation and we immediately run it underneath the ready command. Now, as for the code, this is almost an identical copy from the player script in which we defined the shooting animation. This time only, we're not just def defining the direction, we're also defi we're defining the entire animation name because the bullet doesn't have any different animations inside of it. Now, once that is done, all we have to do is we have to add an animation player to this bullet scene. Now, I've prepared an animation player specifically for this spell, uh, and you can do that for your bullets as well. The animations are simply the eight directions in which the bullet can be fired. Now, back on our spell, we have to make sure that that animation is put into this animation player. So we get the node animation player and we tell it to play the animation, these animations that we defined up earlier. Now, with that done, we can play the game and the sprite script is going to be taking the different animations available to the bullet. However, there's going to be a small problem because as you can see, the orientation of our bullets is not in the right direction. Actually, these bullets, when I, which I fire eastwards or to the left, are actually entirely backwards. And the same is for our bullets left uh, or top and down. They are simply horizontal. The problem arises from the moment we give our um, bullet speed because we apply this impulse to the entire scene and our projectile sprite sheet is part of that scene that means that our sprite is being rotated as we fire in a different direction but of course the rotation is already in how the artist has drawn up the isometric art so basically what we're getting is a double rotation so we're gonna have to correct for that now there's two ways that we can correct for this double rotation or that we can fix this. First of all, at the, in the command for apply impulse, you could change that instead of the projectile speed as the X value only being put into it and rotated to input the particular X and Y values that are necessary to give the right uh, direction. However, that means that you will have to calculate, calculate those exact X and Y values which I think is more work than the solution we're taking in this video. You could also go to great lengths to exclude the sprite, now called projectile, from the rotation. But again, I think that is more work than the solution we're going for here. That solution is that we're going to be correcting for the double rotation within our animation player to make sure that only the sprite, not the entire scene, which is rotated, but the sprite itself is rotated back. To implement that rotation is actually not that difficult. We simply add a um, node, a get node command, and we get that projectile, and we set its rotation degrees back to an amount that is um, applicable to the rotation that is already being applied by the force. Now, um, I'm not going to go over all the values, so if you want to use this in your project, just pause the video for a moment and you can look up the values that I've used for every single direction that is in here. I also want to note that, of course, the animation east or to the right, which is the standard direction in which the sprite is drawn, which is the, the default, um, I have not input any get no projector and rotation degrees in there because that is going well the way it is going. So with this change, we can play the game again 
and now we can fire in every direction and the bullet animation is picking the right direction and it is actually pointing in the right direction within the game. Alright guys, that's it for today. Hope you liked this video and if you did, please smash that like button and hit subscribe. If you got any questions for me about game development or Godot, you can find me on my stream. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. Links and details also down in the description below. And also if you want to expand on this uh, code, for example, if you have an explosion or an impact animation that you also want to be directional dependent, you can take the fire direction variable, which is right here and you can play that fire direction variable uh, or you can put that into the explosion animation and you can pretty much copy past most of the code i hope to see you guys next time on with the combat series continuing it will be number two where we take a look at registering the impact of our bullet or projectile onto george the skeleton and making sure that george the skeleton actually goes down and dies suppose uh, i'm very sorry for george but yeah you gotta do something to learn go up all right See you next time, guys.